Juju, we've got working Yo-yo. internet, have we? Yeah. So far, I think so. Oh, good. We're Thank good. God. It's, oh. it's so weird it's saying that like we're in a third world country, stuck in the rainforest or something. And uh, no, you just you're just south of London, and uh, it's uh, it's a concern. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is a concern. Um, the water uh, in our entire area went off the other day. Um, <coughs> I feel I do feel Jeez. like we are in the middle of nowhere. And uh, mm. yeah, there's just been one thing after another. So, yeah. So, knife edge. It, yeah, not proper, proper knife edge, you know. Mm. Um, water, a little bit more important than Wi-Fi. I, I, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah. But, um, but I don't know, I wonder if you polled, uh, well, I wonder if you polled people if they would actually think that, or if they'd actually know that. <laughs> it's I like, think younger especially, people might think yeah. that, that water's not as important as Wi-Fi. It's like, yeah, we've got bottled yeah. water. But no, we need it for other things as well. <laughs> yeah. Just patronise them a little bit. It's like, oh, you, you little, you youngster. Oh, you have no. no idea how good you've got it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. It's, all, it's all fine now, so we're good. Mm-hmm. Good, good. How all are right. you? I'm good, I'm good, yeah. Just, good. Um, yeah, a week gone by, flown by, but it's been good. It's been productive. Just um, spending... What was cool was um, doing the Neuroscience Academy uh, Brain Coach Bootcamp for a couple of weeks. It was uh, was very cool for a, you know, like, uh, what is it? Yeah, unintended consequences or un- unintended uh, benefits, which was just reminding me is like, oh, just it's really good to study and um, about, especially about things that really interest you. And so I've just been a little bit more. Um, uh, dis- d- diligent and a bit more disciplined with things that I'm interested in and actually just looking into them. So instead of like, you know, just a bit of a cursory glance at something and move on to the next thing, I've just been sitting with um, sitting with some things I've been looking into and then, you know, say watching a lecture on it or reading something from a textbook and then putting it aside and then just doing a word dump of things that I remember from it or resonate and um, yeah, so there's a lot more clarity about these things as well. And, you know, you just feel like you grasp and own the information a lot better and the knowledge a lot better. And um, and so that's been really fun. So it's good, it feels feels really good. It feels really good because I feel like, you know, I'm just learning learning better as well. And that's always something I'm trying to figure out is how to actually learn better. Because if you can learn better, you can get more juice out of life, you know. Yeah, it, just, it, it, it embellishes everything. What have you been studying within the realm of neuroscience or other things? Would you like to share? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's um, yeah. So in, within the realm of neuroscience, um, last week jumped on um, Kathy Dooley's um, half-day course, uh, which was the uh, everything about the vestibular system, and um, so that was that was great fun. So for you know for people listening who don't know what the vestibular system is about, it's basically one of the three systems that's involved. Uh, one of the three systems in the body that's involved in um, finding your equilibrium, you know, your balance and coordination, your orientation. The other two systems being your visual system, so eyes, giving you a ton of uh, feedback. In fact, you know, the most feedback uh, that you're going to get in terms of creating a 3D map of your environment and then your proprioceptive system, which is around your body and um, which uh, tells your brain where you are in space. And then your vestibular system is basically uh, that orientation as well. So it keeps you keeps your eyes level and playing field. So if you know if you change change your uh, change your head position, it adjusts so that your eyes stay level with the horizon. And um, all three of these function to keep you, you know, keep you level, basically keep you on your feet and not falling over all the time. Let's put it that way. Right. And um, and so yeah, so that was that was really cool. And then after that, it was like okay. There's five hours worth of material here. This is amazing, and the you know relaying it to the things that I really want to know about, like okay, how does that relate to movement? And uh, mm-hmm. um, if you know the vestibular system is off, how can I train it back? So, or how can I know that that's the main driving issue um, with uh, with people? And then you know show them how to train it back, and then. Um, yeah, and then how all these interact, and you know why is it so important if one of these is so off? Is like um, yeah, it's important, but like what's the mechanism for it as well? So, mm-hmm. um, and how can I yeah, and how can I do that in the realms of the work that I um, uh, that I do? So yeah, really fascinating. And then um, 
uh, yeah, so that's just constant, just sitting with that um, and then developing the next thing. And then with the Brain Coach Bootcamp stuff as well, because there's a ton of material there, it's like, you know, I've just done this thing this week where I just put on one of the lectures uh, again and just had it playing in the background just so I could kind of get triggered by a couple of words and just remember mm -hmm. some of the things we learned. And I'll be doing that um, whenever, as and when. It's like whenever I remember or whenever I feel like, oh, yeah, there's a certain thing which I need to refresh my memory on on this um or just delve a little bit deeper into i'll do that as well and then other stuff as well which um uh, which i've been doing is like there's this there's this guy called john viveki he's a cognitive psychologist or a cognitive scientist out of uh, university of toronto and uh, he's got this so far looks like an amazing lecture series that he's put on youtube it's like 50 episodes they're an hour each or un or under and um and his whole um the whole title is awakening from the meaning crisis so yeah super fascinating it's just right up my street as well just of right. like uh, you know combining yeah, yeah just combining cognitive science with philosophy and history and evolution and um, eras and ages and so far looking at certain figures in history as well who have propelled us for certain eras in history which have um, defined where uh, been a big part of defining where we are at, we, at the moment and um, yeah it's highly relevant also I think to the work that we do you know is dealing with people and um uh, like yeah awakening from the meaning crisis i think is a pretty um pretty telling subject title as well because i yeah. think um there's a, it just seems like there's a lot of that you know it's just the uh, kind of just getting by in uh in life without thinking about um what is actually important to do or grossly important to do and what's uh purposeful what's drives us and where do we ultimately find meaning in day-to-day in -day life um, because especially yeah, just a kind of like seeing some people struggle with it during the pandemic and uh, you know hitting lockdowns and stuff and also just the kind of it's like it's in the air as well I can just feel it I don't know about you mm -hmm. you can tell me what you what you kind of sense but um, part of like the sense that I get is like you know just yeah just in the air of just this don't really know what to do with ourselves um during during this time so yeah i think it's i think it's some um some important uh some important stuff to consider and like the way he's going about it is super fascinating to me at least so yeah just been delving into that and thinking and uh, thinking about the lectures so far wow you've been super super busy um mm. i'll come to that i want to go back to mm. the vestibular stuff so I have this vestibular stuff going on. I I have um, oh, yeah. I get like vertigo, labyrinthitis, uh, in a in a ear imbalances, and <clears throat> I don't really know why I get them. Other than a few years ago, I got back from uh, one of my many flight training trips in Thailand, and I, I kind of picked up a virus. And I tell you what, when your balance is off, and when um, when you're dizzy or, or when there's something going on in the inner ear, it throws everything off. I mean, mm. you, can, you can't see properly. You feel like you're on a boat and it, it, um, you can't, it, you just can't, you can't function as a, not as a mm. human being. I don't know if I mean that, but you just can't function very well. And, um, and I get it. And, and it's, and it's now, and you you may come across clients now, now that you've done the vestibular course, but I, I come across clients quite regularly. You either have labyrinthitis or vertigo or both. Um, and often like once you get it, that's it, it's recurring, ongoing for life. Like if it, I get it now, if I'm tired or stressed or I get a virus, it will kick into my inner ear and it will throw mm. me off balance. Um, but it is, it's a really interesting sensation to experience because you either feel like you're just swaying or you feel like the room's spinning like you're drunk. And mm. until you've experienced it, you don't really appreciate just how much equilibrium within the inner ear, within, within our balance system, how important mm. it is because it throws off your vision and then it throws mm. off everything else in the body as well. You feel sick, you can't do anything. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating thing to deal with. And, and what I find with clients is that they, they tend to not come if they've got something going on. 
they they tend mm. to be like no i need to just lie down and get over it and it's a bit like a migraine in that respect it's, it's all kind of interconnected isn't it the, all those mm. systems um they just need to lie down and not move and get over it and then they start to feel better so i guess my question to you is did you find any in, information i'm sure you've got tons from kathy um how to deal with this because it's head positioning isn't it and, and and realigning getting people used to that weird feeling of being unbalanced is mm. that right yeah yeah there's um so there's, first of all there's assessments for it as well so vertigo mm. is yeah the most um commonly occurring thing in um commonly occurring disequilibrium in vestibular issues so yeah. there is yeah you can assess it so you can put somebody in certain positions uh, there's a whole bunch of tests that you can do and then you can see how they respond you can even figure out like uh, basically uh, which canal in the air in the vestibular apparatus is affected so these wow. canals are you know roughly speaking orienting you forwards and backwards um side like to side gyro, isn't it yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's like a gyroscope and then these canals are like, yeah, forwards and backwards, side to side and rotation as well. Um, so you can figure out by doing these assessments which canal is affected and then you have some corrective maneuvers that you can perform on someone and you can also integrate that into your movement training as well. So you figure out which um, way the head position is um, triggering uh, or yeah, which way the head position is sorry, which head position is triggering the um, the problem. And then, yeah, you do some of these corrective movements. And then when you get somebody into, like, you know, say certain uh, movements, you can get them into a quadruped position, i.e. when they're on all fours, um, and, and challenge them with that particular head movement incorporating into the proprioceptive system as well. So you're trying to re reorganize the system um, and yeah. recalibrate yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Recalibrate it into the, the rest of the uh, systems that are involved in uh, in creating equilibrium so that, um, yeah, you're just coordinated again. Um, so, yeah, there's there's certainly things for it. And, um, yeah, so you for me at the moment, I'm not aware. Like what you said is like, you know, people deal with it and it just kind of stays there. And um, so I don't know to what extent people should have to just live with it um, or if it can be fully corrected i think in a lot of cases it can be corrected it sounds like right. and um and uh, but then if it's um but uh, yeah then it might if it's like an infection thing then that's mm. probably a separate issue um if it's with uh, the itis you know inflammation then that's going to be something that you probably yeah you have to manage maybe um um but uh, but yeah there's there's definitely correctives for it and there's definitely ways around it so a lot of people who do suffer from like vertigo and maybe some dizziness and um is like you know that doesn't have to doesn't have to stay that way cool that's really cool and, and it reminded me of like if you can correct that equilibrium it's almost a bit like you know when you correct jaw shift like you know we often talk about like jaw shifting. If your jaw is deviated one way, then it affects all movement. Whereas when you start to correct that, that jaw shift, it then has a knock-on effect down into the body and creates better balance and better coordination. So it's not part of that system, I know, but hmm. it's so intricate up here, isn't it? There's there's mm -hmm. so much more to it. It's like, you know, in NKT Level 3, when we learn about the eyes, and I've never even considered the yeah. eyes. In, in movement patterning, but it's like, mm. of course, because you know this is our, this is one of the the most important systems, and yeah. if they're off in any way, I'm sure mine are, then uh, that's going to have again a knock on an effect. So eyes, ears, like jaw, everything. So I feel like this is my next step in anatomy um, to to really get to grips with jaw anatomy ear anatomy which i'll probably do the vestibular and then eye anatomy as well it's uh mm. so valuable in our teaching you know yeah i like visual it affects everything it's like if someone you, you move where your eyes are moving so i mm. often cue the eyes but i'm like i really need to know more about the anatomy mm. of this because it's like you're you need to look directly forward what happens if you shift left or shift right so mm -hmm. a bit like jaw shift yeah. isn't it yeah, well, with um, yeah, the eyes are like the the most important 
um, probably the most important sensory apparatus that we have to help us navigate our mm. environment. About It's like something like 60% of our brain's real estate is dedicated to processing visual information. So wow. just you know, think about that for a second. It's like the amount of your brain that is dedicated to processing visual information. It tells you something that's pretty freaking important, right? So, pretty damn important, yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, so yeah. So you want to incorporate vision into somebody's training as well. I mean, the simple fact, like, um, you know, especially for people who do sports and, uh, you know, tennis, you're tracking a ball, football, you're tracking a ball going through the air, American football, baseball, whatever it might be. And uh, so if your ability to track that ball is not is not on point um, and it's purely to do with, like, you know, the visual system, you if you can't track that ball, so something called like a smooth pursuit, you want to be able to smoothly follow uh, a moving, you know, while keeping your head still moving, a moving target. Now, if you can't do that, your eyes will create a momentary jump. And um, so each time they try and catch up, that um, your brain just shuts down processing that visual input because it's like, oh, that shouldn't be happening. I don't know what's going on here. And it shuts it down. And for a fraction of a second, you're blind. So wow. how crazy is that, right? It's not you something that you actually, because it right. can't process the information. So, um, so yeah, you're, you're functionally blind basically for, for a fraction of a second because it doesn't know what to do in the middle of that saccade. So right. when you, when you, when you think of it like that, it's like, you know, how much are we missing out on when, uh, if our eyes aren't functioning well, and then we can turn that into like day to day stuff, you know, like driving for example, yeah. and not just that, but if the eyes aren't working very well, then your neck can take up uh, the, the slack for it as well. So if, for yeah. example, your eyes aren't very good at tracking to the right, you're going to use your neck to help you out more to do that. You're just excessively straining your neck. And I think of like, uh, for me personally, after you know smashing my head on the concrete when I fell off a bike, like five, six, five years ago or six years ago or something, um, some residual stuff is like, you know, it is eye stuff as well because I hit my head on the like the right side here. And um, so I get the sensation where, you know, it's it's quite a minor thing, but it's, you know, I, I can pay attention to it. I can, I can feel it is if I kind of move my eyes to the top right corner of, uh, of my vision. There's something about it and I can tell my body doesn't feel quite safe doing that eye movement. Whereas if I do it towards the top left, it's like, yeah, it feels cool. But I go top right and it's like, oh, there's something here which isn't quite right. And both um, eyes or just the right? Just the right. So, yeah, okay. it just feels like it's just the right. But um, you know, so, like, yeah, kind of like up in, up in here. And you've got these uh, what are called extraocular muscles, the muscles of the eye which control the movement. And um, so, you know, they're so f like the control that they have is very, very fine on um, over the eye and because it needs to be because of how we're moving our eyes. And like, you know, we make these momentary movements with our eyes constantly, but we'll never register it, you know, um, yeah. like uh, like, you know, a good example of this is if you're looking if you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're flicking between left eye, looking at your left eye, looking at your right eye, you will never see your eyes change because mm -hmm. there's that kind of like blind spot to that change it doesn't need to register that but if you video yourself doing that you'll be able to see the eyes changing so yeah. um that's the kind of like level of like kind of fine control that there is there as well so um yeah so i can notice that and and i you know perennially like you know right side of my neck is i manage it really really well but there's there's right. all, you know just some every now and then like every few months or something like a little bit of tightness just kicks in and it's like okay this is not to do with the usual things here and there's a suspicion that is to do with the eye because I've worked on the eye before and it helps. Mm -hmm. And then maybe it just comes back every now and then for whatever reason. So, yeah, so it's 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 yeah, it's a it's massively important part of um, part of your, yeah. let's say, your sensory apparatus, which is going to help you navigate your environment and actually function well. So there's there's lots of like heaps of issues that can come along with not having that uh, system working mm. accordingly for you. And it's something that we take for granted so very much, isn't it? Mm. Our mm. hearing, our sight, um, yeah. just there it happens, do you know what I mean? Mm. And yeah. actually when you start delving into the anatomy and how it all works, it's like, wow, this system's complicated and it has so many attachments 
as you say, into the neck, into the back of the skull. And, and again, this is a knock-on effect down the body. And, mm-hmm. and, and it was that whole thing of, you know, when we spoke to Kathy Dooley and she was like, you feel like you know nothing. The more you learn, the more you see mm-hmm. how all the systems fit together, it's like mm-hmm. the more you realise just how intricate it is and how much more there is to learn. And it's like, yeah, I have a fairly okay grasp of anatomy, but I feel like... Yeah, I want to know all this stuff and 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 mm. add it into my practice as well. Add it into my teaching. Yeah, yeah. can't hurt for sure. Know? Yeah, and you can do it in like really subtle, sly ways as well. You know, it's like if you're getting mm. somebody to make a movement to the right, is like make them lead with the eyes first. You know, because with that leading of the eyes, because the amount of information that they're providing to your brain about what you're doing next, your brain will go, "Oh, I'm moving right." So then it will prepare your muscles and your whole bodies and slings to move to the right whereas if you look left and then move right it's like oh this is a little bit different yeah Yeah, Yeah. that's a that's a challenge um Mm -hmm. isn't that kind of brain training as well that kind of thing Mm -hmm. how do you mean um so say you're moving your eyes one way but you're going the other way isn't that a little bit of Mm -hmm. brain training as well yeah it's okay yeah i guess it can be kind of using the yeah proprioceptive um i guess maybe uncoupling them a little bit to help mm, you do yeah. some stuff but um yeah i wonder i wonder to what degree how useful that would be long term yeah mm. just yeah you just got me thinking <laughs> this should be another question i write down to explore of like yeah, yeah. um if you repetitively you know go look one way go another way um what does that do for your what does that do for your long-term equilibrium yeah, there you go. Good question. It's a thought. And, and you know, it's like, mm. it, and then it, 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 it makes me think and brings me back to, as I always like to talk about, this whole idea of that, that zoning in that phobia focus versus panoramic focus and how mm. important that is for us as well. It's like mm. that, that sharp vision versus that kind of more relaxed vision and how we really need to toggle between those within mm. our day so that we can serve brain energy. I mean, um, that's yes. something that I'm always very conscious of. It's like, Stop looking at your phone. Stop honing in. Hmm. Like, try to take the focus away. When you have a break, don't look at your phone. Go out and just look at the view, and that hmm. is going to make you better and have more energy over the course yeah. of the day. So, yeah. oh, that's fascinating. That that kind of neuroscience aspect as well of hmm. conserving energy through the visual field as well, because you're hmm. not constantly taking in tiny detail from a phone or a computer i know that i get really funny vision if i look at a computer too much so i know that's my cue to go right let's Mm. put everything down and go out and walk and look at the horizon and uh yeah chill yeah that's um that's a good thing to do like do you is is there a trigger for you like do you notice when that's starting to happen or is it just you pull away from the screen yeah cool how how would you describe it it goes a bit pixelated. Ooh. How weird is that? Mm. Like, like I mean, you're had, in like Super Mario from yeah, like just, Nintendo yeah. days. It's really weird. Yeah, a little bit. It just goes a little bit kind of, I mean, my vision's weird anyway. <laughs> my whole body's weird. But no, it just goes <laughs> a little bit weird. And I can't really describe it other than it just looks like a picture. Like it just looks fuzzy. And I'm like, oh, mm. okay. I've just been looking at a screen for too long. Um, and yeah, I know that's my cue to put everything down and just even if it's like I'm not going to go for a walk, but just put everything down and look and take my vision a bit wider rather than, mm. you know, <laughs> constantly Get at a screen. deeper and deeper into it, <laughs> yeah. which isn't good for your neck either. Um, no. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a great reminder when it's like, oh, my eyes have gone funny. I need to step away from the computer and, <laughs> and not do so much it- at work. Is there a stage before that though? Is like, can you tell if before it starts to get pixelated? <laughs> no, it just is no? pixelated. Yeah. It's yeah, like okay. fine, 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 pixelated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't see. I'm going blind. Yeah. No, Random. it's not like that. It just goes a bit fuzzy. It's like yeah. I just everything just looks a bit weird. Um, is that yeah, while you're so. still looking at the thing, like while you're still looking at say the computer screen, or is it if you're looking yeah. at the computer and you look up and then you're like, oh shit, everything's fuzzy. Bit of both, yeah. Okay, both. right. Yeah. So you start to see, right? That's such a weird one. I can just imagine you just looking at something and then it's like, oh, I can't see it anymore. Better take a break. 
<laughs> right. right, wow, okay. <laughs> My head's gone straight to the matrix. I don't know why. And that, that bit where he like puts mm. his hand in the mirror. I don't know why, but it's yeah, not yeah. there. Um, <laughs> so, no, everything just goes a bit weird. And um, yeah. I'm like, right, time, time off, time mm. out. Because I do a lot of kind of RT close-up editing, don't I? And then all of mm. a sudden I'll be like, oh, okay, that's enough. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, okay, cool. I mean, uh, yeah, I thought that'd be interesting to explore as well because if other people struggle with the same thing, it's like, you know, what kind of things can you look out for? Like, personally, what happens to me is if I've been looking at something, like, uh, for your vision, like, right, like, you know, focusing on, on something uh, to you know, right in front of me, mm. um, what's interesting is, is I kind of feel a bit discombobulated. Is like... Uh, you know, that's so weird <laughs> that you said that. You know, at the beginning when you're like, think of a word. That was right. word. <laughs> Discombobulated. Well, there you go. Yeah. There's telepathy. I said to Jude <laughs> before we started recording, I was like, you know what? Let's just play a game where you just say a word and we'll make a conversation out of that word. And um, and we'll relate it back to whatever the kind of stuff we talk about in the, converse, in, in the conversation on the podcast. And there you go. I just read your mind and uh, we got there. <laughs> Uh-oh, what does yeah. it mean? Because I'll get it wrong <laughs> and then Gorinda will laugh at me. <laughs> it doesn't matter. If you get it wrong, it's like then that just means I can say whatever the hell I want. I can just riff um, and make something up. I can be like, it just can probably, yeah, yeah, it just means you ate too much food. <laughs> no, I know that it doesn't mean that, but I feel like <laughs> I'm not quite sure exactly what it means. But um, yeah. there you go, you put it in a sentence, well done. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like spelling bee. Can you use it in a sentence? I should ask you to spell it now. Um, no. It is, yeah. It's like, don't make me do that. It is, um, yeah, that's the feeling I get. I kind of start to feel like I'm losing mental focus. Um, cognitively, I just feel like I get a little bit all over the place. And um, so that's, yeah, hence the discombobulation. And I feel a little like. A stress. I wouldn't even say there's a strain on the eyes. I just feel like there's a little bit of a stress that's building as well. So along with that discombobulation, just not no, not even pressure. I just feel like mental stress. I just like okay. start to feel like eh, something's something's not right. So then I start to try and practice looking off, practice looking off into the distance because you know if I'm stuck in a friggin at home is like you know especially if it's like you know it's raining or something i mean at the end of the day i look out my window i just see a building 20 meters away from me you know so it's not that helpful but um That's That's yeah so yeah. so i mean the things you can do is just practice diverging your vision basically it's like yeah. you know just wide like narrow. Wide narrow. exactly yeah. wide narrow wide narrow and uh, and that yeah and that seems to and that not doesn't seem to it does help because you know it's it's what the information what is that relaying back to your nervous system is like, oh, okay i can relax now so um it puts you out of that stress state so that's what i kind of start to notice and um especially it makes it even worse if it's like scrolling and i'm using social media and if it's been like 15 minutes or something yeah. like that that's when i go oh yeah there's something inside me that is saying get off this get off this get off this and i just have to put it away otherwise that um feel yeah that kind of i feel distracted i feel discombobulated i feel like that mental stress coming on also because the other thing the other feeling that i get is that i'm not being productive uh, because i'm just mindlessly scrolling stuff that i don't really need to be doing and it's not actually so you know you know some people might say oh you know give yourself a break it's like well actually there's better things I can do with that break time as well because yeah, it's, oh my God. yeah it's not actually letting you relax it's just no, you're constantly really receiving nice. colorful stimulating and uh, in, information and people's opinions which don't have any nuance and uh, you know they're, they're there to trigger you to and it's all that kind of stuff that's going on as well so it's like uh, Fuck it off. And um, yeah, I've used social media a lot less this week and I feel better for it as well. So it makes a difference. Uh, yeah, I have too. I, in fact, in general, I, I scroll less and I do that thing of I post and run. I just, I can't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really enjoy being in that space. I know with social mm. media, it's a kind of two-way street. If you want to do well on social media, you have to kind of put in the time. But I'm like, I don't want to. I find mm. it hard work scrolling and liking and all that sort of stuff i actually as soon as i start scrolling i'm like oh no i've got to put it down so i probably get five photos in and then that's it i'm done 
Mm. You know, so I, I feel like I've I've kind of got to grips yeah with social media and that I'm not on there very much at all. Dip in and out, do mm. your thing, go, and and that's it really. I uh, mm. it's kind of boring. There's other stuff to be doing, right? So mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. There's more productive stuff to be doing. It's just mm. finding that. Uh, well, I guess we could say like you know finding that balance with use of social media because you know it's pros and cons it's like it's got its caveats it's got its uses um you know connecting with people all that kind of stuff as well but yeah and staying connected with people but i don't know there's there's also Not this real, side of it which it. yeah yeah is i don't know yeah yeah exactly there's i mean <laughs> there's lots to say about uh, the potential you know pitfalls and um uh, virtues of social media and and everything but uh yeah there's kind of i don't know it's like the echo chambers can grow bigger as well mm -hmm. like you know a lot of times <laughs> yeah you're just looking for yeah i don't know yeah I'm, I'm gonna go like off piste on this one as well but it's just basically you know part of it is like okay you have access and and uh, the ability to uh follow or interact with lots of different kinds of people now and um on social media and it doesn't necessarily have to be people who are directly in your sphere and not exactly you know they don't have to be people who believe the things that you believe um yeah and and that could be you know that can be useful you know, to the extent that um it just gives you a different perspective it gives you something to weigh in on uh oh sorry it gives you something to take in and lean on and just think about and you know it could be it could a, a different perspective which helps you widen your um uh, widen your horizons um but it just also seems like you just find more and more of the people who think exactly the way that you do and um mm -hmm. and then you end up having you know you just watch that kind of play out for longer and longer and longer and longer and you end up seeing a massive divide um and you end up having a situation like you did well, part of the thing is you end up having a situation like you did in the states where there's like you know the, the twitter sphere is outraged that someone like donald trump gets into power but it's like well just remember that there's only like, i don't know i can't remember the numbers but it's like th maybe 10 percent maximum 20 percent of the u.s population is on is on twitter and everybody else is just not so there's so many people who are not involved in the conversation that you're forgetting exist so it's like yeah that i mean that's going to be one little thing that's going to uh, make you realize that twitter isn't it isn't the uh isn't the be all and end all or social media isn't the be all and end all and uh it's not yeah it's not yeah it's not necessarily representative of reality plus um the way the way it, the shit just keeps evolving on there is everything becomes more and more and more polarized so you never actually uh, so you never get to a point where other people uh, you can interact with other people um and have an understanding for their point of view because by the time that starts to happen it's so polarized and you think they're so off off target that you're like oh no screw that person i don't want anything to do with them and it's what is wild um as well that you kind of see that divergence going on and it's it's weird because it's representative like it's kind of like that whole thing of like the loud minority because majority of people aren't necessarily in that i mean i think there's polls of like saying things like 70 percent of um americans are like we're just in the middle we just want to hear both sides and then take uh, take our pick um but then it's the people on the other end which make the most noise and then you just think is that what the world's like you know is that what's what's going on and they're the ones who are making the most noise on social media and really it's because it's just like regular regular like most people are just regular folks it's like i'm one of them where i'm like i'm not participating in that conversation because i don't give a shit to and most yeah. people are going to be the same it's like they'll rather talk about it in their in their spheres or something and then so yeah you get to you get to see this kind of mutant um of what's actually happening in reality and then somehow that ends up playing out in reality Be and yeah it's just it's just nuts so um that's why we have to kind of be careful of our social media use i guess and um 
and yeah, and just kind of take it all on, um, take it all with a bit of a pinch of salt and use it maybe to investigate things further rather than take it as gospel as well as, um, yeah, like the way we have conversations with people realize that, that this is not the way to have conversations with people. You're always going to miss a ton of nuance if the only way you're interacting with somebody is like, you know, maximum 280 characters on a thread. And, um, and yeah, yeah, there's, there's loads of stuff. Mm. And the way people interact on social mm. media, it's like, whether it's positive or negative, it's, it's almost like extreme, isn't it? You wouldn't right, yeah. react like that necessarily or mm. in real life, you know? Even, right. even if it's a positive comment on a feed, it's mm. still like overly... <laughs> to someone that you don't even really know, though. Right. Uh, not me, but I, I see it all the time. And, and overly friendly and overly enthusiastic or, oh God, the trolls and... And how they react to certain posts and it's like are you like that in real life do you actually <laughs> yeah. go around talking like that hmm. um so yeah you have these two extremes or just people being narky online and being somewhere in the middle of that and it's like i don't know it's so easy to be one way when you're sat with so many layers of i guess yeah. protection it's very easy yeah. to put your point across but you imagine you're in a room with all those people and that main person that you're posting on there, whatever it is, would you be as ballsy? Do you yeah. know? It's like... Yeah. And the invariably like answer is going to be no. <laughs> no. And I would rather be my authentic self, whether it's online or in person, than... Uh, do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's like I wouldn't ever be yeah. overly friendly or enthusiastic and someone's posts that I didn't know and and I that's because I'm like that in real life but so many people are and and it's like why mm -hmm. and really it's like it's interaction again and it's everyone's got an agenda with social media I think as well um mm. they comment because they want something or they want people to see them or whatever it is but I don't know I I feel like I'm kind of not done with it but as I say I'm in and out and I'm not going to mm. interact uh, mm. on that level yeah yeah no that's um that is a good observation as well it does happen so you, you there's a lot of authenticity missing and um and that's a really hard thing to actually try and maintain when you're just surrounded by inauthenticity um yeah. so um like you know a great example in our world and like the health and fitness world is just basically seeing stacked dudes all over instagram just posting about you know like um how you know the workout of the day we just pump we just got our pump on and uh, they're looking great and everybody's like oh shit you know i've been training for like you know five months why don't i look like that you know or i've been training for two yeah. years why don't i look like that yeah. and um everybody's like you know daily grind and all that kind of stuff i'm gonna say like i will say as well like obviously i'm not gonna knock it completely because social media has its virtues as well because you do find your pockets where it's like this is a great community to be a part of you know and this is a great like people to follow um good information good vibes all that kind of stuff i mean that's yeah. what that's why i'm on it as well i mean i follow um professionals who have a valued opinion um who challenge the, some who challenge the opinion that i hold so it makes me think about things in a slightly different way or take on board what they're thinking uh, people who i agree with um you know, people who are like all that kind of stuff is just um uh, it, and you know people who create a good tribe or create a good community around uh, whatever they're doing so yeah. totally happy with that and good entertainment as well you know this that's like let's not forget like that's probably a really good aspect of it as well um it's just getting good entertainment I, fi I find like i end up finding out news through memes and then i'm like oh shit yes. that happened Me maybe too. i need to go look it up right Me too. <laughs> yeah because yeah, you know it's like um, what happened oh yeah Exactly. You just get sent a ton of memes or something like that. And you're like, what, what is this about? And then you actually go look it up. It's like, oh shit, right. There's, there's a, there's a Viking in the Oval Office in <laughs> or wherever, whichever part of the, um, yeah, I remember that name. Yeah. oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. I'm going to, I forgot what the, the name of the house was. Um, uh, but yeah, anyway, so I saw those and I was like, oh, this is hilarious. And I was like, oh no, wait, this is actually happening. <laughs> <laughs> i gotta go find this out you know so that was a hell of a start to 2021 but um yeah. 
but anyway, yeah, like, uh, yeah. So it was just like let's just caveat and be saying like there is there is always that good shit. But yeah, it's that inauthenticity. So you've got these Insta fitness models and stuff, and just being like, hey, here's you know, it's all about the daily grind. You know, get up, work hard, mm-hmm. and you can achieve this too or whatever. They're never telling you that these dudes are basically up to the eyeballs in uh, performance enhancing drugs because for the people that are on there it's like you do not look like that and you do not sustain that with without that right so you can you can pretty much be confident knowing that most of these people are taking some sort of um some sort of performance enhancement whether it's uh, testosterone replacement whether it's some actual androgens or whether it's like you know whatever it can be that is going to help them get into the shape and then keep that shape and then you've got regular joes and being like you know it's that whole comparison model body image thing as well where it's like okay was like why don't i look like that i train pretty hard i've trained for a long time like what's going on here and then you start to figure out that um uh for, well first of all you gotta ask yourself the question do you even want to look like that why are you comparing yourself to that well you know all that kind of stuff of just like what is it about your existence which means you feel like you have to look like that and if you're not getting there you're a failure you know all that kind of thing so yeah there's that aspect of it but then it's like nobody really knows the truth and uh, because nobody's actually talking about the truth because they're making it seem like um this is something that is attainable but they're they're cut they're they're, they're, uh, they're not revealing the actual way that they've gone about attaining this thing um so uh, yeah i'll make that statement i uh, just look at most people and i'm like yeah you're taking you're taking something <laughs> and and uh, i will be i'll be more willing to bet that that's true than not true okay there's very few people who will look a certain way especially the older they get and not be on uh, and not be on something so that's something for average people to know is like yeah they might be promoting you know the work hard stay hard get hard um you'll you'll achieve your thing but the there's you have to sift through the bullshit there's there's so much that isn't being talked about and um it's difficult to notice the inauthenticity but when you start to when you start to kind of look around a little bit and you realize how things are being spoken what's being spoken the it's you you start to get a little bit of a flavor for it you might not even be able to put your finger on it but you start to get a flavor for it and um and that's that's one of the reasons why but whenever i've uh, I, that's one of the reasons why I'd back away from social media big time. It's just like that lack of authenticity that you end up seeing a lot often. So mm. there's very few accounts where you can follow them and be like, yeah, that's that's authentic. You know, they're they're saying something in line with who they are, what they are, even with what they're selling. I don't care if you're selling something as long as it's done authentically. And uh, there's so much nonsense out there. It's like I don't know what's your like what's your experience with that do you see the same thing or are there yeah, other I I, I think other kind of things that are triggered yeah you, you you become wise to it don't you 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 gain that knowledge that it is bullshit i mean i guess for me like i i i, I with women it's it's less that they're on drug enhance or enhancement drugs but more that they're maybe not eating as well as they should be they're they're peddling nutrition even though they're probably not looking after the nutrition that well um, they're training maybe more than they're letting on, that kind mm. of thing. Um, maybe drugs in a different way, I don't know. Um, but it's certainly not steroids or anything like that. But it's just unhealthy lifestyle behind that look. Mm. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it, and I, I guess it goes back to something I was talking about last week as well. It's just this whole idea of nutrition and one way of eating being the way to fix everything because it isn't and and you see a lot of it online these people look amazing and they have this way of eating or this way of training but what we're not taking into account is what's going on behind that machine that marketing machine because a lot of them have Mm. huge marketing machines behind them but also um you know what 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 their day-to-day actually does look like um, because the, everyone's always going to put their best foot forward on social media. Yeah, sometimes mm. you might get the odd vulnerable post, but you're never going to know what someone's doing day to day, realistically. Mm. And yeah, they they might not be looking after themselves as well. 
Um, so it is, it's like, take everything you see on social media with a pinch of salt, because you just don't know. And it's even, it's even people that, you know, uh, uh, are talking about mental health and wellness and things like that. And it's like, are you looking after your mental health? How are mm. you as a person? Do you know what I mean? It's like, I feel like, again, it's just that, that putting their best foot forward, saying their bit about whatever it is, but are they practicing what they preach? Mm. We don't know. You know, it's, it's like, you may feel like it comes from a place of authenticity, but you genuinely, genuinely don't know. No one's perfect. No one leads the life behind mm. the scenes. They really, really don't. Um, mm. So I think it is just becoming a little bit more uh, knowledgeable about that and, and knowing that it, not everything's real. Yeah. Whatever sphere you're in, everyone yeah. struggles. Mm. Yeah, everybody's got their own shit to deal with. Yeah, and you're just, again, you're going to find very few people who are at that level who um, have that level of authenticity. All right, so this has made me think of something that um, I've picked up from the Awakening from the Meaning Crisis lecture series so far mm -hmm. with um, mm -hmm. John Viveki. So I've been thinking about it. It blew my mind, uh, but also it makes complete sense to me. So I'm going to try and relay what I th think I've got out of it as well. And it okay. relates to this. So it's the idea of intuition, right? So intuition yeah. is a gut is a gut feeling. And um, so sometimes there's too much information to actually explicitly figure out. So you have to you you default to your gut feeling of like all right well this feels like the right thing to do you know it's coming from it's coming from that from, coming from the gut and um and so the way you make decisions from your gut is basically um it's an implicit system whereby what's what's happened over time is you've been in an environment where you have picked up on patterns in the environment, right? So this is what your brain is really, really good at doing. You know, we'll know that from, you know, some of the stuff that we study is like your brain is really good at just basically picking up on patterns and then making predictions off those patterns and then correcting those predictions if something just that, any information that it takes in doesn't uh, quite fit with uh, with the paradigm that it currently operates from. So, um, and then funny enough, when it doesn't do that, that's when you get things like cognitive bias, right? So, um, yeah, so you're in an environment and you're picking up um, the information and the millions and millions of bits of data stream that are in the environment and your body's taking it in and it's basically recognizing patterns in its non-conscious way. It's not, in, it's not like you're doing this consciously. And then so over time, what you end up doing is building up intuition where you have a feeling about something and you're like, something's not right about this. Uh, I can't put my finger on why, but you know, I have to... I have to say, in a gut feeling, I'm out of this scenario. It's because you're, it's because of having been in this environment where you're picking up tons and tons of implicit information and putting it into, and your brain's putting it into patterns. You have um, taken that in, and that's become your intuition. Essentially, that's how. Sorry, you're using that as a guide for making decisions that you can't really um, f figure out. Like you know, uh, there's no, there's, uh, you're not making consciously, so you have to rely on that part of you. So. Does that make sense so far? It does. It, it carry on. Mm. Um, I have questions. Carry on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Make sure you ask them as well, because uh, I want to. I want to make sure that I know what I'm saying here as well. At least I. Th I, th I think I know where I'm going with this. Okay. So. So then, basically, the prerequisite there is then you need to be in an environment which is giving you good information, so you can have good intuition. All right. So if you're not in a good environment, if you're in a shitty environment. Um, which is providing you what do you mean like when you say shit environment what do you mean so this is where i relate it back to social media so mm -hmm. you if you're i mean there's so many kids now growing up with their sphere being social media right is like they'll interact less with people and actually more online mm -hmm. so if we're talking about the level of in inauthenticity that we're seeing then if that's all you're bombarded with your again your brain is picking up on all these patterns and being like okay well this is the way of operating in the world and it's done on a subconscious level then you are you are taking in information then any gut into gut feelings or intuitions um that you're making decisions on are not based on 
good information that is in your environment, right? So if you're surrounded by inauthenticity, then your your instinct is to act inauthentically, even though you think you're being authentic, maybe, right? So th this is is where it could get a little bit like uh, twisted. However. So that's that's the thing that you're seeing. That's that's all that you're a part of, and then so you don't have a sense when somebody is actually being inauthentic. Is is where I'm going with this. So over time, okay. you're in that environment long enough, where uh, even your intuition can't tell you that you're in a situation which isn't isn't right. Uh, ultimately, isn't good, and you're in an inauthentic situation. And so that's just going to breed more and more and more and more inauthenticity, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of the nature of social media as well is like that's what trending is all about that's what something going viral is all about is like it just makes its way through society i.e social media and um and then you know we're led to believe implicitly that this is how things are supposed to be i guess like you know this is this is what's right yeah. and then so your your ability to make decisions off that kind of stuff is is kind of impaired um oh, and so that's yeah that's what i'm getting at so we're now uh, it, it's it's affecting our it could be affecting our intuitions it could be affecting our ability to make sound judgments okay. when uh we're unable to uh, when we're picking up patterns from our environment and the environment is kind of is leaning towards being more sick so if we go mm. back and you gave the example of children being in that environment of social media, right? But if, mm. we, if, if we can just track back to what you were saying about in intuition is created from patterns and from understanding your environment. If we step away from social media for a second and look at that child's environment, i.e. Mm. their actual reality, their, their hard hardware environment if you like so outside like their parents and and who they're interacting with um if if their patterns within that environment so with their parents or their friends or whatever clubs they go to if if that's more healthy yeah they have a link into social media but if they have more healthy patterning if you like then maybe that authenticity and that ability to uh, use their intuition to find that bullshit online, maybe maybe that will help them. I think of it from my son's mm. aspect, my, my son's point of view. He does use social media a little bit, but it's all quite, it's all quite innocent mm. because he knows that I'm there and I'm on him and I'm looking. Like, he looks at things to do with Japan and Korea because he's interested in, in that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, and I'm sitting there listening to you and I'm like, yeah, I think that can happen when you have a peer group that's influencing that environment as well. But yeah. if you have healthy influences as well within, within your reality, then work it out with me. I'm like, maybe mm. there, is, there is a point where, you know, you can smell the bullshit. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, fully. for us, it's like, mm. okay, you and I, we do a podcast. I have lots of friends that will call out bullshit and, and go, you know, that, that's, that's crap. What are you looking at? And, and I think that's, that's what's required, isn't it, to mm -hmm. help your intuition and your understanding and your guidance. Otherwise, if you haven't got that and you have a shitty peer group or whatever it is, a work environment that isn't helping you, in that authenticity or in in that that realm then yeah then you're gonna you're gonna kind of interact with more inauthentic things mm. online does that make any sense i was just kind of mm. riffing off that but yeah yeah that's yeah, kind no, of what i was thinking yeah fully so yeah because it comes down to environment essentially is like you know how much time you're spending mm. in this environment and picking up the patterns yes. in that environment and uh, so you it basically because you can't explicitly uh, train your that specific ability to pick up on patterns to make it become part of you um it has to be implicit so the implicit mm -hmm. thing is is like well what's the first place to start is essentially creating a good environment for somebody to dwell in and uh, and, and live in right. so yeah so the first and foremost thing is is like 
try and have it so in reality you're grounded in a strong environment in a good environment and yeah. then whatever goes on out, out there in online is just something that you're you know maybe participating in but like you said taking it with a pinch of salt and mm -hmm. but i think the problem maybe is and the way it looks like it's going is most people are spending their most of their time in that in that space in social media mm -hmm um online rather than actually living in the so-called real world so yeah. the you know, that kind of ratio is f flipping and um and so there's there's all the unseen consequences of uh, of that going on and uh, and that transition happening so yeah so fully i agree i, I get where you're coming from is like if mm -hmm. the real environment is strong then it can help when that individual goes into this other environment however um yeah, our ability to make decisions and and, and ability to rely on our intuition and stuff is uh maybe becoming impaired if that kind of ratio is flipped and we're hanging around in spaces where there's well let's stick to the example that we used where there's lots of inauthenticity and and that's what people are getting wrapped up in yeah yeah it, it is tricky um, and I suppose it's if it's you it's almost like you have to have a reality check if you can if it's someone that you know that's getting involved and going down that rabbit hole of social media then you kind of have to put them in check as well so mm -hmm. it is really tricky and and it, it kind of reminds me of when you were talking about the pandemic it's like this this is what the pandemic has done you know we're all kind mm -hmm. of it's almost like sent us into that social media world and what mm -hmm. you choose to look at on social media is going to be hugely important, especially during a pandemic or mm -hmm. as we come out of it. So, yeah, it's a it's such a big topic and, and it's something that I worry about raising a child and, and, and a mm -hmm. near teen. Um, but I guess I'm lucky in that he's very good. He'll come to me and go, I've just been sent this. This is, this is wrong, isn't it? This isn't right. And I'm like, yes, correct. And so I think if you have that relationship, if we're, if we're talking about children, if you have that relationship with your child and they're not hiding things from you, then you, you can help them to see that authenticity. It's, the mm. problem lies is when it's either you and, and you're in that world or they're kind of being sucked in and they're not talking about it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's man, that's tricky. <laughs> it's just so I don't even navigate, I tell you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know what's gonna happen. It's like, <laughs> it's like I'm just imagining it's like just having kids and just being like irrelevant to them because they're like the only thing they give a shit about is being on social media no. or playing computer games or something. <laughs> but then but then you create that as a mm. parent. Like you yeah. either do that benign type parenting where you're like you just let them have it or mm. or you actually you give them rules and and constraints mm -hmm. fair yeah. rules and constraints but and and actually we, with my son he he doesn't play computer games he's not really on social media a little bit but i just think it's it's how you parent and 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 the way that you do it is is key uh, mm -hmm. and that's environment isn't it so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just um it's just the sense that just the parenting is just something that puts you in a perennial state of anxiety <laughs> oh god i can tell you all the time <laughs> my son um had his first like taste of independence this week um he had a little summer school thing and he was walking nice. to school and back yeah nice but i tell you like the anxiety <laughs> of having him walk to school I mean, I even have an app that tracks him, and he knows yeah. about it. Like it's one of yeah. those. Uh, we both have it. Um, yeah. It's still really hard because you just think mm. of all these things that can go wrong. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, you never stop worrying. You really, really don't. But you yeah. know, do you have kids? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, worry. it's like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's just just be just just accept the fact that it's like. The biggest kept secret in the world just how fucking hard it is to have kids yeah, correct. Yeah. <laughs> and to right. raise them I, I, yeah um it, it is hard but it's it's beautiful as well and it's 
it's one of those things that is like a secret club until you you don't you can't really explain it until you're in it and it's not intentional mm. it's just i feel it. like it is you know sometimes you i feel do. like it is intentional really? i'm like yeah it's just like you know it's, just, it's like you finally become a parent like yeah 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 <laughs> that's it you're gonna get it now as well it's like what why didn't you just let us in why didn't you just like tell us like what like to be prepared what to expect you need to know whatever you want to know i will Oops. tell you so that when the time comes you are super prepared <laughs> Yeah, I bet you're going to tell me a bunch, you're going to feed me a line of crap and then I'm going to get there and you're just going to no. go, ha, 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 ha. No, I right. never would. I'm not like that, you know that. Yeah, I know, I know, but I don't know, You maybe you'd love to see me suffer on some level. No! <laughs> Honestly, like, you know, when you have that first child, you, get, you, you don't want anyone to, like, be messing with you with that how hard it is and what you need to know i will yeah. you know give you as much advice and you'll be like actually you just moved on from there that that was 11 yeah. years ago this is now <laughs> i'll be like oh okay yeah it's happened quickly <laughs> yeah. yeah it's um sure. no i think there's, there's just so much about it it's like you know having friends who are going through it and uh, and just watching them obviously having cindy uh, Huffington on the podcast as well mm-hmm. from Curious Neuron and just having a really great conversation with her about um, you know essentially parenting and raising a kid and all the trials and tribulations that come with it and yeah. what can we expect and like there's just so much that is is just completely unknown and then yeah. um, I don't know the variability of the quality of advice that gets given out as well it's it's yeah it's tricky it doesn't seem like it's i don't know it's also <laughs> this is kind of like in that social media world as well or like the <laughs> it's a funny one it's like me and my friends joke is like you know we're becoming tamagotchis do you remember tamagotchis like i'm oh. sure like sh- if you gotta remember like people who are listening you gotta remember what tamagotchi is it was just like it was like that first instance of like when you're a kid of giving getting given some responsibility or actually willfully taking on responsibility yourself because it turned yes. into a game yes. it's like i remember you know just having that little pocket thing that was on a key ring and then just shoving it in my pocket and checking on it every now and then it's like oh right there's this robotic uh, sorry there's this computerized cat that's taken a shit and i need to clean up the shit okay and then then it got to a stage where everybody was distracted at school right yes. <laughs> and Maybe like you died. can't yeah, everything that is like you can't have that. Uh, so they just banned it from schools, and then you'd come home, and then your cat shat everywhere, and it was basically dying, and then you couldn't look after it. It was like, what the hell is this? This is no fun. But anyway, um, but yeah, it's like we're coming like real life Tamagotchis. You know, you got like um, a bit different. yeah, well, you got like apps to um, track what's happening with your with your kids as well, like you know you start to enter data in of like you know here's when they pooped here's when they went to sleep here's when they oh, ate wow. all that kind of stuff and then all <laughs> like what starts to happen is is it will go off and then it's like oh you're supposed to have taken a shit by now and then you look at your baby as i hasn't taken a crap it's like oh we're just going to change the nappy anyway I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> what's what's this this is like but what this happened is where intuition to... then kicks yeah. in it's like yeah but it's like rather than th- an app yeah but also like building intuition is harder to do than to use an app right it's like having an intuition about your kid is harder to do than just be like oh the app said so and uh, so it's like what the hell is that so we're getting even further removed from understanding like what it is to be a parent and how to do it well yeah i would be aware of those apps and actually just use your intuition Mm. um yeah i you will know instinctively as a parent what your kid needs if you're tuned in and and you're bonding and you Mm. have bonded like we talked about with cindy um skin to skin all of that even as a dad uh then you'll instinctively know and yeah i love yeah well i love how you have to throw that in as well even as a dad <laughs> it's like oh, no, yeah dads get no, no but it's true no no but it's true it's like dads like get involved it's like the amount of stories i've heard of just um because you know a lot of them don't yeah baby gets baby comes along and then like okay there's that 
feeling of like what is my, like we discussed it again with Cindy is like that was a good episode I think Hello. people yeah I think that was number 60 so people should go back and listen to that one especially if you mm. know people who are having kids and send it on to them and you know want to understand more about child development as well and all that kind of stuff but just um yeah okay there's that idea of not knowing what your role is and you feel like you're a little bit pushed aside and then you know you're just in court between a rock and a hard place you never realize if you're doing the right thing or whatever but then there's also like actively like trying to avoid your duties as well like i get that sense there's a lot of like laddishness um from from new dads of just like uh, you know whatever i get to try and figure out how to go on a stag or go to the pub while yeah. uh, while the wifey yeah, takes right. care of the baby and yeah. it's like you're a dickhead <laughs> oh. <laughs> so so it's yeah. like it just that that kind of stuff is just really that just it just bothers me basically yeah. it's like uh, well then you're going to be a time. great dad you're going to be a great <laughs> yeah. dad he's going to use his intuition and his instinct and not need a bloody app and you know you're going to bond <laughs> beautifully and you're not going to be like right i'm off you're all right <laughs> yeah. a couple of days cheers um yeah, yeah. i'm going anywhere yeah, I'm, t- I'm going I'm, I'm going to jiu-jitsu and i'm just making my baby stay on the mats and be like yeah soak it up you know get yeah, don't in do the that fighting spirit either so maybe don't do that either <laughs> why not yeah <laughs> that that what yeah no but yes you're fine mm. <laughs> yeah yeah you say that and then i'll be i'll be yeah kids will be slowly killing me oh my god this is so hard but, i think you might find the sleep hard g but you know you you mm. will get used to it i mean i used to be a lot like you in that I loved my sleep and I would sleep solidly and get up at, you know, a a reasonable hour. But when you do have a kid, that all goes. So (laughs) I think you might find it hard for the first maybe year and then you'll be all right. I think I should should do like a a feeding and a sleeping schedule just like my baby. (laughs) It's like you know, it's like, you know, babies in a feeding schedule or napping schedule and everything. I'm like, yeah, I want one of those. <laughs> I'm like, I'll just nap, uh, I, get I fed at certain it. times. Yeah. I know. That'd be amazing. Um, yeah, that's the one thing. It's just like, yeah, lots of people say it's like, they, ah, this is one of, the, one of the lines that really bothers me is getting your life back. I can't wait right. until I get my life back. And it's you like, hear that a lot. Yeah. Well, no. Oh, when, I was, when I had a younger child, when I had a younger yeah. child, like, you know, can't wait to get. Or you must must be really excited about getting your life back. You know, like when he's five and he's sleeping through, and it's just like bloody hell. But my life back. It's like my life is different. It's it's never going to be the same mm. again. I'm never going to get it back. It's it, mm. this is it. This is this is how it it rolls now. It's like I, I find I find those kind of things really weird. Or get your figure back. And it's like my figure is <laughs> never going to be the same as how it was pre-baby, but heck, it's much stronger and better than it was. So yeah, I just find mm. it funny those those kind of sayings that you get, like yeah. get your get your life back, get your body back. It's like, yeah. not the be all and end all. It's like <laughs> everything changes. You get a yeah. life back, but it's a new and a more amazing, enhanced life. <clears> I think. But yeah. Mm. Yeah, fully. That's um, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. It's just almost like. For you, just imagine saying that for years. You know, if it's like several years, you just like, I just can't like, I can't wait to get my life back. He's like, why did you do this? Why did you do this in the first place? Exactly. He's like, that's all I can think. He's like, yeah, it just surely you understand the the fact that life is never going to be the same again after you've had a kid. So what are you trying to get back to? Is the only way is forward. Yeah, so that's a nice. That's a nice way of saying it. Have you? maybe we can discuss this, but do you know anyone that did have a kid and was like, oh shit, that, that, was, that was a bad idea? Do you know anyone like that? Or is everyone like, this is the most amazing thing that's happened to me? Yeah, when, um, well, I, the feeling that I get from most of the friends I'm hanging out with is like, yeah, you know, this is great i mean it's freaking hard but it's great and then i explicitly asked a couple friends as well when we were hanging out and and um i was like you know what is it like like tell me what how would you sum up the first year and it's like honestly it's been the best year of my life so um, which is which is you know it's beautiful it's like ultimately you want yeah, to be like yeah it's hard yeah it's like they say yes it's hard but it is the best year of my life because 
know, what are you doing? It's like the greatest project that you're ever going to undertake, right? Yeah. And really. um, so, so yeah, so that was, yeah, it was kind of cool to hear, is like, you know, regardless of, you know, trials, tribulations, how difficult things can be, is like, yeah, this is the most rewarding, fulfilling, best year of their life in, in their sense. I mean, so, was that mums and dads or more mums or both? I heard that from a mother, um, but I wouldn't, yeah, you know, I wouldn't say that was uh, the dad. Yeah, because I know the mother through the dad, so I, I would think that she's speaking for both of them okay. uh, in this right. instance. Um, cool. Yeah, so yeah, which is cool. So yeah, I don't know anybody who's like uh, kind of outright gone, oh shit, that was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, it'd be interesting to come across and like, come across that and be like, all right, well, let's, let's, let's figure this out. Right. It's like, I mean, there's no turn yeah. back. So let's, yeah. uh, let's figure it out. Um, what about you? I, I'm actually, I asked the question, but I'm like, no, I don't think off the top of my head. I know anyone that was like, oh shit, that's a bad idea. Um, even baby number two or number three, even, um, no, like everyone I know, has has done such an amazing job as a mother they're all amazing mothers mm. and this was my in my text to you this is what i meant about wonder woman and wonder woman mm. um just like i i see all my friends and you know they they do so much and one of my friends has gone through a really difficult time recently and i was with her yesterday and it was like she's done so well and it was just like it was just a real like I felt like paying my respect and, and to honour everyone and saying, like, we're all Wonder Woman, really. And I know, obviously, <laughs> guys as well, but I just, like, I look at all my friends and, you know, all the women that I know, and, and I have clients come into the studio, and some of them have gone through such hard times, and I'm like, you're all amazing. And mothers, not mothers, you know, professionals, whatever it is, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, it's just, we all have a lot to do and I think everyone's amazing for that reason. You know, I see everyone mm. navigating life and, and, and doing it really well. And, and yeah, sometimes it's hard, even if you're not going through hard times, it's, it's still, I still think we are all wonder women. So yeah, not to like poo poo guys or anything like that. It was just something that I really noticed this week in my world that, you know, I know such amazing people. So that was it. Nice. It's good. It's yeah. good to be surrounded by powerful people. Yeah, that's an important thing, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it just um yeah, it just reminds you, you know, it's just inspiring as well. So you obviously yeah. you seem quite inspired by it too. So yeah, that's why it's I really important. Was just like, but it was more just like watching people either navigate difficulty, navigate difficult you know, situations and and handle them. And I think that's that's such a powerful thing to witness or listening to people's stories in my studio and, and seeing that they've come out the other side or they're doing something about it to help mm. them navigate the difficulty that they might be going through. And it's like, uh, you know, and so, so many times I just want to say, you're amazing. I never do because, you know, it's the first session you don't want to scare them off. But a lot of the time I just want to say... You can't really scare, you can't really scare anybody off by calling them amazing. No, I know, but it's like, whoa, all right, love, calm down. But it's like, you know, <laughs> so British. Kind of say, yeah, <laughs> I know, maybe I should. But it's just like, you are amazing. And, and, you know, to go through difficulty and to still want to come out the other end and, and do something about it is, is amazing. So, uh, you know, I take, I take my hat off to all the strong women that I know. Um, mm. we're, all, we're all Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> there you go you come across yeah. any no i think you deal mostly you deal with a lot of women right and i'm wondering in like or in your life or in extended circles as well is like have you seen the equivalent of the the, the wonder woman the superman yes of course yeah. i'm surrounded okay. by them right All right that's the thing it's like okay so yeah if we want to look at the guys in my life then absolutely like i i feel like I'm surrounded by the the superheroes as well. Absolutely, mm. like you're all out there doing your thing. So, yeah, for sure. I guess I guess just this week I was thinking about it from that point of view that I see, mm. you know, people like a lot of the women that I know like having well, not a lot, but some of them having a difficult time, and it just made me think about that. But yeah, 
and this is one of the things it's like over the last few years i've I've really changed my environment and the people that I surround myself with and the guys mm -hmm. that I surround myself with are definitely like that kind of level of, you know, just very strong, know what they want, know what they're doing, like they, they, they work hard and, but also just lovely people and, mm -hmm. and not twats and just, <laughs> yeah, it's really important because there are twats <laughs> yeah. out there, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So exactly. yeah, you're all fucking set the bar low. Well, <laughs> yeah. Is that what do you want from a guy? Don't be a twat. That's it. <laughs> no, I tell you, no, but I tell you, gee, that's quite important. <laughs> Don't be an arsehole. Don't be an arsehole, please. Yeah. You know, be a nice guy. Yeah. Um, mm. And then we'll work from there. But yeah, I think I've surrounded myself with guys that I see as is strong but you know lovely people and that's important as well hmm. yeah absolutely no, i was just curious because it was like yeah pay my props to the women but i was like I'm just making sure that um that's obvious on on the other end of the spectrum as well because yeah i mean like i was just yeah. talking about how i've noticed or heard of like dudes become dads and like they're not playing an active role and that's just that's a bit shit. So I was making, sure, I was just wondering if like that's it, if you're noticing the same thing or if, um, you know, they're, they're pulling their weight and being Superman as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of the, of the, yeah. The dads that I do, uh, I, I do spend time with, but you know, even non dads, it's like, I think it's just over the last year, it's, I think you just make a decision as well yourself about who you want to have, who you want to be surrounded by. And one of my things was, is that I just want kind, lovely people, you know, who have my back, but are also going to make me better and make me, hmm. make me level up, make me a better person, um, challenge me, but encourage me. So, hmm. and, I've, and I have that. So like whether yeah. you're male or female, I have a lot of that in my life. And, um, and that's really important to me. How about hmm. you? Uh, what, do I have those kinds of people around? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fully. Um, yeah, hundred percent. It's just, um, yeah, I'm lucky. It's just, I'm, I'm lucky, but I'm also, I guess, I'm a little bit ruthless like that as well. It's just like as soon as I notice that somebody's just like, eh, you're a bit of waste of space. I'm just I ain't hanging oh. out with you. <laughs> you know, it's, um, so if I get a it, dear Jude, uh, dear Jude text or just nothing, then I'll know that I'm a, a waste of space. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. I'll, t I'll tell you. Don't worry. You're one of the few okay, people thanks. who just have the courtesy, courtesy of being told that you're a waste of space. No. <laughs> <laughs> you no, are it's a waste just. Of space. Yeah. No, it's just. I think for me, it's just easy to be uh, like. As soon as I spot something about someone, where I'm like, I'm just not going to resonate with that. Or mm -hmm. no, what's like? What's it, so it evokes something within me. Whereas, like, if it just feels like you know, you just can't rely on that person. You just can't trust them on some level yeah. then you know because you end up getting this sort of feeling of like what's what's the what's the situation here i'm just like no no it's done it's over it's, or rather i'm not taking time to interact with you you know that kind of thing okay. um yeah, I understand that. yeah so it's just yeah it's essentially if somebody just doesn't have uh, the values then whatever we're just we're just not going to get along do yeah well, it's, exactly. it's who you resonate with as well if you have certain mm. values and certain ideas and and ways of of living your life and someone isn't within that you're mm. going to notice that again it's yeah. coming back to that kind of environment and intuition isn't it you mm -hmm. and your intuition is telling you that that person probably isn't going to be a right fit in your life yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so create the right environment so you can figure that out as well but um, yeah, no, I've, I've just had, yeah, I've just had it in the past. It's like, even with like, you know, elders, like, you know, extended family and stuff like that, where it's just like, no, uh, just, I'm supposed to respect you because, you know, your extended family and just how tradition works and stuff like that. Um, or no, you are an elder, so, you know, you're supposed to be shown the level of respect, but I've had it so where they haven't shown it to me. So I'm like, well, why would I ever want to waste my time interacting with you you know yeah. so just whatever sure. you know just keep it polite yeah, and then I just move the fuck on <laughs> mm. 
I think that should be the quote this week. Keep it polite and yeah. move the fuck on. There we are, yeah. we've got it. It's like me yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nailed. Is, uh, don't try and get out of your duties, love. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but um, but yeah, that's something about like uh, uh, navigating change and transition, which you uh, uh, which you mentioned briefly before before we went on air. Yeah. So, it, is it kind of like to do with that stuff, or was there something else to it that you were wondering that you wanted to discuss? No, I, it was more just like obviously, um, uh, I told you before the podcast, I'm just navigating lots of change, and I guess it's more about how to handle it and handle it well and. And maybe giving mm. tools for people if they are going through big changes, little changes, just transitions. Like I'm going through a lot of like, changes and transitions in my life just with my environment, I suppose. And, and, it, and I suppose, in a way, it gives me a lot of anxiety. And ways I deal with it is through the breath work, through breathing, calming my mm. system down. Um, just gaining a bit of reality uh, as well. Because I think you can get very in your head when you're dealing with yes. lots of big change and lots of big transition. Um, and it's very easy to kind of get away, like go, get ahead of yourself and go off on one about it and, and overwhelm yourself. So what I found really useful this week for me is to to ground myself. I've been going for a lot of walks, like mm. doing that whole panoramic focus where I just like, relax my vision, put some music on, go for a walk, get out in, get out in the green. Um, and that does really dial it down, that calms it down and it gives me that perspective. But also just taking those breaths. I don't even like, you know, prep myself and get into a position where I can start <laughs> breathing. It is just there. It's like, just mm. start breathing. That You don't need to lie down and put cushions onto your legs or anything like that. I was just like, yeah. right, just, you know, breath in through the nose, bring it into your center, try and expand the ribs. Slowly breathe out, a bit of 4-4 breathing. Um, and it is that. It's just grounding yourself back into reality and and talking about it as well. Mm. Talking about it is really helpful. Um, and, and actually getting out and seeing people has been helpful as well. I think that's useful when you are navigating really big changes, changes and transitions. Um, to talk about it with other people. Maybe not for advice or anything like that, but... Just to say, hey, this is happening mm. and it's big, and and people good to just like, even if they don't know what to say, just go, it's going to be fine. And you're like, yeah, it is going to be fine. So yeah, that's that's it really. It was like, know that if you are navigating things like that, then there are things that you can do, like looking after your breathing, your nutrition, your sleep, all the things that we always talk about, mm -hmm. hugely beneficial. Yeah, I mean, beautiful, beautiful summary of just what it is to be a well-functioning human being you know what do you do you surround yourself with nature you move walk you breathe in a specific way and yeah. you surround yourself with people and i mean and you nourish yourself you talk about nutrition right there lastly as well mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah those are the tools <laughs> it's like it's all it's always yeah. kind of right there in your face yeah. um but it's just remembering that when uh, when things ain't when things are pretty stressful and um yeah absolutely is you can it's very easy to get in your own head and, or get stuck in your own head so you have to get out and the way to get out of your own head you know the best way i find is is through movement so get out of your head and into your body because when you do that it's that cascading effect of just um, you know improving blood flow to the brain as well um doing things like you're talking about is getting that panoramic view going on as well or just taking in um you, we talked about it in the early part of the podcast you know using your eyes in a certain way so that you're taking in your environment in a certain way and you're telling you yeah, that it's okay that it's safe and it's calm and it's, it helps it to de-stress so uh, when you're doing that that is um uh, that is a uh, a valid tool against um mm -hmm. against stress and just getting out of your head and what you're also doing is I mean, there's this kind of, there's this focus state and there's this diffuse state. There's the focus thinking and diffuse thinking. And like when you're in your head and you're just trying to keep like, you know, problem solving essentially continuously, continuously, continuously with this thing that you uh, is in your face, um, you have to step away from it. You have to go into diffuse mode thinking and not dwell 
on the problem. You have to be able to, and diffuse literally meaning that, you're not actually thinking about the thing, you're just kind of letting it be aloof. And that way you're giving your mind and your brain space to make connections um, between different life experiences, between different solutions to other problems that you might have had to help you solve this particular problem and uh, overcome this um, scenario. And if you don't do that, if you're constantly stuck in your head, then you don't see the wood for the trees, as they say. So you need to you need to have those tools. So those are yeah, those are super sound, and um, they're just core to being a, a well-oiled human being. Basically, you just yeah. get out of nature, move your body, nourish yourself, have people surrounded you know, surrounding you, so that you feel supported, and you know you have this cascade of positive uh, neurochemicals flowing through your system and um and the best way to, <laughs> best way to do any of that is to execute on the things that you just described yeah. beautifully put i couldn't agree more there you go mm. done <laughs> boom that's episode 67 done <laughs> cool that's awesome so thank you everybody for joining in uh, or tuning in i hope you enjoyed the conversation this week we talked about a few different things um it just bounced yeah just went in flowed into some various topics as well which were kind of it just turns out they ended up sitting on our mind and we just brought it out of each other so that was uh, that was very cool and um yeah so thank you for tuning in and tell us what you think about the podcast you know find us on instagram at evolve achieve thrive and uh, drop us a dm and let us know what you think of the content and um what resonated with you what doesn't resonate with you what kind of opinions you have on some of the things that we talked about especially when it comes to like you know social media implicit knowledge and intuition and stuff like that it'd be cool to uh, hear what other people have to say about that and uh, definitely subscribe to the show uh, whether you're on apple podcasts um spotify youtube all three that would be amazing <laughs> or, or whichever platform that you're listening on as well please just subscribe there and uh, if you're enjoying the content please leave us a rating and review it really helps other people see the podcast and it gets it out there uh, for other people to be like okay yeah, this sounds like something i want to listen to as well so really appreciate that and just share it with your friends we really uh, love more people to get on board and um, feel the good vibes so thank you very much for tuning in and we'll see you for the next episode.